with the definitions, with the spirit of definitions that I made yesterday, I would like to state some, some problems <coughs> for which some solutions exist, but I, I don't know what is the status of these problems today. First, uh, in classical probability, the simplest case, if you have two finite sets A, B, two finite sets, and then P A is a probability distribution in A and P B is a probability distribution in B. It simply means P A of x greater than or equal to 0, sigma P A of x, x belonging to A that is equal to 1. That is a probability distribution. And then <coughs> consider all probability distributions P A B on A cross B, that is the joint system, right? These are classical systems and then on the uh, Cartesian <coughs> product P A B such that P A B has marginals, has marginals P A, P B on A and B, which simply means P A B x comma y sigma x belonging to A, this is equal to P B of y. Similarly, y belonging to B, same thing that is equal to P A <coughs> of x. So, all such P A B's, they make a Compact convex set. Compact convex set. And then for any probability distribution, you have the entropy, namely H of P A, which is simply written H A for simplicity, that is sigma P A X log P A X. Similarly for B and for P A B. So, H A, H B are the entropies of that and for P A B, it is, the entropy is denoted as H A B. So, in this uh, convex set, one, one question for which there is no good complete solution, if you call this convex set as C1, what are the extreme points what are the extreme points for this convex set. Into what is minimum H P A B as P A B varies in the convex set. <coughs> So that means P A B should not be spread too much. Its support has to be small and can one find an A. If not the exact value of the minimum, can you find some inequalities, estimates and uh, this is some kind of uh, programming problem also. 
and computer buffs can also make uh, uh, practical experiments with them. And uh, of course, the case when A equal to B and it is uniform distribution, it was solved by Birkhoff and von Neumann around, I think, in the long ago. Birkhoff, von Neumann solved it in the context of some uh, context of game theory and Birkhoff in the context of linear algebra. But uh, that is the only case and, uh, and there uh, the <coughs> minimum will be attained at an extreme point and then the extreme points will be finite in number and one would like to know how the entropy varies uh, on the extreme point. And uh, in other words, uh, the two systems A and B have to be uh, tightly packed to make a, make a joint system. That is, they have to be tightly entangled. How tightly one would entangle? And this problem we may throw some interesting concepts while uh, in the attempt to solve the problem. And there is a corresponding quantum version. Quantum version. Namely, you have the Hilbert spaces of two quantum systems, H A, H B, and the Hilbert space of the joint quantum system, H A B, which is the tensor product of the two. H A tensor H B and uh, you are given two states rho A here and rho B and with their von Neumann entropies S rho A, S rho B with respective von Neumann entropies. Then you have uh, the convex set C rho A rho b equal to all states rho belonging to S of you remember yesterday's notation states of a b such that trace rho relative trace over <coughs> h b which I denote by B. I have been tracing out over H B. This is equal to rho A and similarly tracing rho out over A that is equal to rho B. <coughs> and then you consider S of rho in this convex set. And uh, what is the minimum of this row when row runs in C row A. So in other words, the two states row A and row B have to be entangled in a, in a system which are as much correlated as possible. The two systems have to be as much correlated as possible. In particular, if they are completely independent, rho A cross rho B, then this does belong to this convex set. And in that case, the von Neumann entropy is uh, S of rho A plus S of rho B. That is the maximum value because generally S of rho A B it has, it satisfies the inequality, sorry, S rho A, S rho A plus S rho B, whatever be rho A B, this inequality is true. That is the maximum. But the problem is the minimum, so which make the two states, the, the, the two systems highly correlated. And so one would like to have an estimate of this quantity. So this is an open question, I think, on which uh, uh, I would.
should welcome some comments. Now, with the help of uh, the maximum entangled state which I described yesterday, I will describe a piece of with the help of there is some question. No, I just wanted to be sure. What is the open question? Huh. What is the minimum? About some estimates for the minimum, some inequalities, uh, tight, tight inequalities, if not exact value. In fact, uh, even the case, even the case uh, rho a equal to the identity of H a divided the, the von Neumann case here, the, the d a being the dimension of H a and rho b equal to identity of H b by the dimension of d b. Even in that special case, uh, uh, what is the solution to the von Neumann problem? This is the analog of the uniform distribution. Is that even a conjecture? There should be a conjecture. Huh? Isn't there a conjecture? There is. Uh, I had reported some program, but at the moment, I, my memory is uh, failing. Uh, uh, maybe if I can have access to this paper, I can tell tomorrow. Uh, this is in the. Annals of the Institute of Andre Poincare. Immediately after, there was a memorial issue for Paul Andre Meyer where I had written something, but there is one mistake also in that paper. Uh, but, the, but the estimate is correct and proof is right, but there is, uh, but the proof can be set right by making use of the <laughs> The Araki lib inequality, you can get a lower bound. But about the extreme point set, I have some comments, and uh, but I don't uh, at the moment I don't remember what is, what is the exact theorem I have proved. Right. right. The trouble is even in classical probability theory that does not seem to be a, a literature, much literature on the subject. Now I would like to indicate a, a, a small piece of technology which became popular when the, when the theory of quantum computing, communication, etc., began the was begun to be studied. It's what is called dense coding. And the, let me take the case uh, of two systems which have the same dimension, say h tensor h and the dimension of h equal to n. Now, if you take b h, b h is also a Hilbert space and between any two operators x and y, the scalar product being trace x transpose uh, x adjoint y. That is the scalar product. Then B h has a unitary orthogonal basis. They play a very important role generally in coding <coughs> theory. Unitary orthogonal orthogonal basis. 
In other words, BH admits a family of unitary operators. The dimension of BH is n square, so alpha varies from 1 to etc. n square. W alpha unitary. And the scalar product trace W alpha dagger W beta equal to n times delta alpha beta. Because when alpha equal to beta, this is identity, so trace of identity is n, which is the dimension of. <laughs> such a thing is, such an object is called uh, unitary or it is in coding theory it is called unitary error basis. Once you have such a unitary error basis, you can, <coughs> you can construct what are known as EP or states. EP or It stands for Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen because uh, these states uh, were raised, were first uh, introduced by in this paper of Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen I think in 1935 and they were considered counterintuitive but they formed the foundations of quantum information theory. Right? So, they somehow appear in all pieces of technology connected with quantum cryptography, quantum computers, quantum information theory and so on. They form the foundations of the subject. So you remember uh, you choose an orthonormal basis which is labeled by I, orthonormal basis, then you remember the notation I I which is tensor product of the state I with I and then the maximal entangled state which is a unit vector which is a pure state which is also a unit vector is equal to 1 over root n sigma I I I equal to 1 to n or maximal entangled pure state. Now you consider C alpha, this is 1 by root n, i equal to 1 to n. You apply W alpha in the first, right? W alpha applied to i, i, which means the tensor product of this vector with this vector or in other words you have applied the unitary operator W alpha tensor product identity. But one says uh, you are applying the unitary operator on the first system. There are two systems and you are operating, you are applying W alpha on the first system. No, all, all the now, a simple algebra shows because of this condition. So, here is a elementary algebraic exercise. Use this condition to show that C alpha, alpha belonging to alpha equal to 1, 2, etc., n square is an orthonormal basis for H tensor H, H tensor H and each one of them is maximally entangled, each maximally entangled. In other words, you have to, you have to show 
You have to do some algebra. Very elementary. <coughs> Namely, trace either on the first copy or in the second copy of H of C alpha C alpha. The pure state means this one dimensional projection operator, that is the state. And that is equal to identity of H divided by the dimension. I have chosen the dimension to be m. Because that is maximum entropy. The, dimension, the entropy being log n. That was our definition of maximum amount of entanglement. This basis is known as EPR basis. EPR. Yes. If you have these pure states available, I, yesterday I also defined the notion of measurement. Combining uh, these two, the EPR basis and the notion of measurement, you can communicate messages. Huh? No. Oh, you will get that. If you have another basis, you will have another orthonormal basis of EPR states. There are some kind of unitary equivalence. No, you have here is a small mathematical problem which is a, which one can try. Namely, if you have one unitary uh, orthogonal unitary orthogonal basis, if you permute you don't distinguish. If you multiply each one by a scalar of modulus unity, don't distinguish. And similarly, if you change uh, W alpha gamma dagger, do not distinguish between the W alpha basis and this basis. Huh? Up to this equivalence problem classify unitary orthogonal basis and this throws many interesting uh, surprises. Right? So, but not you need for, for existence, do not you need the dimension to be a power of 2? Dimension of the Hilbert space? No, dimension of BH is n square. Yes, but for existence of basis. Oh, existence of basis. Oh, I will give you an example. No, I, I, don't you need, don't you need the, the you know, Pauli matrices and so on, so power of 2? No, no, no. 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 Just uh, the diagonal and the, and the permutation of you. For example, uh, you, you uh, one easy way to construct such Examples of okay. I will give an example of such unitary error basis. The, for example, if you take uh, two dimensions, C two, C two, that is equal to C two, then uh, sigma naught, sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. This is uh, is a unitary. Basis. Similarly, if you have, uh, uh, if it is dimension m, uh, identify it with L2 of Zn. And then here you look at the translation and multiplication operators, right? Namely, U A applied to x is equal to x plus A. And then V B applied to X is the is the character I'm getting the character B evaluated at X multiplied by X because Zn and its character group are same. So if you view the character B evaluated at X and 
So, if you consider u a multiplied by v b, these are the while operators for that variant group and that gives an example of a unitary error basis. If you put uh, two different group structures, then uh, if the groups are not isomorphic, the two unitary error, uh, error bases constructed this way, they are also inequal, they are inequivalent. So there is a problem here, uh, uh, of course it, it leads you to more question. Classify the unitary error bases and can you introduce from the language of, from the point of view of communication theory, can you introduce a notion of a economy of the basis and order them? So these are questions which are vague but on which I think some thought should go in. Right. So how does one use EP or basis in communicating messages? So my messages are n squared in number n squared messages and if I borrow the language which computer scientists use that is Alice who wants to communicate the states to Bob, Bob and they are sharing. So the first Hilbert space is usually denoted by a line. The second Hilbert space is, this is called a wire and the second Hilbert space is again another wire and if I write two wires, it means tensor product of two Hilbert spaces. So there are three tensor product of three copies and so on. And Alice and Bob, they have this maximum uh, entangled state uh, C, which is, which is this one. So Alice has in her possession th this state, but she ha she can operate only on uh, on the first wire. So what she does is uh, yesterday I forgot to mention uh, what is called the dynamics. How do how do pure states change? If you have observed. A, a general state to see the uh, changing the state means applying a unitary operator to C. So only thing is this U, is, this I'm getting only another name for this, but one borrows the language from computer science, so one uses quantum. <coughs> So suppose Alice wants to send the message alpha. So the here is there are one, two, etc. n square messages, and suppose she wants to spend the, send the message number alpha. <coughs> if she wants to send the message alpha on the she has the state to C, she will apply the get w alpha. <coughs> So what will be the output? The output will be on the tensor product of the two Hilbert spaces. The output will be C alpha. That is the definition of C alpha. Then what does Bob do to get the message? He makes what is called a measurement which is usually denoted by this kind of symbol, measurement and the, the output of the measurement is a classical quantity. So <coughs> it, is indicated, it is indicated by such, such a symbol. So this is a classical output, that is a symbol from a set. If it is a wave function in a Hilbert space, it is a quantum output. And if it is a symbol from a set, it is called a classical output. Classical output. 
Now, yesterday I introduced the notion of, um, of measurement. Here you have 1, 2, 3, etc., alpha, etc., n square. And the von Neumann measurement in this case is to alpha you have the <coughs> projection C alpha, C alpha. So, that is a spectral resolution, it is called a basis measurement, right. So, here is the von Neumann measurement. Already the system is in C alpha. So, if you make the measurement, because it is already in C alpha, you will get the message alpha with probability 1. Right? Because this is the projection P and the state is C alpha of C alpha. And for, for any other projection, it is trace C beta of C beta that is 0 if beta not equal to alpha, but if beta equal to alpha, you get 1. So, you will get ultimately the output will, you will get alpha with probability 1. So, what Bob will receive, the classical output will be alpha with probability 1. So, in various sense uh, alpha, by applying this gate on the maximum entangled state and if Bob makes this von Neumann measurement, he will get the classical output alpha. And what will be the state he will get? It is again C alpha. It won't be C, but now the collapsed state will be C alpha. This is an illustration. So, n squared messages can be transmitted, uh, can be communicated by Alice to Bohm if uh, such an EP or basis is available. So, the, usually this is given as an illustration of the power of the EP or basis. Okay. Uh, you can read more about these things in uh, the book of Nielsen and Chuang. Chuang and Also, I have written some TAFR lecture notes. Those who do not know quantum theory, they can follow, they can use this because I use only linear algebra and elementary probability to, to, to communicate the same. And, uh, I have also included a detailed proof of the Shore algorithm for factorizing an integer into its prime factors uh, using a quantum computer. So, it is uh, uh, quite some fun to work with this. How to transform the problem of factorization of positive integers into the prime factors? using uh, unitary operators and the dynamics of unitary operators in this kind of uh, circuits. Right. That was a great discovery made by uh, uh, Peter Shore in 1995, for which he received the computer science medal. Like, I have forgotten you know, the model. Huh? And never, yeah, never lay now prize in the Berlin Congress. Right? So I, I was uh, uh, learning quantum theory and quantum probability, and when I saw this paper and the algorithm, I was completely surprised that that uh, there is a lot within unitary operators and dynamics of 
unitary operators and uh, the number theoretic pro number theoretic problem is uh, contained contained in the language of circuits another interesting problem here i would like to state before going there is something called uh, universality theorem of quantum computing uh, quantum computers and what is the theorem essentially it is the following and uh, suppose you have uh, hilbert space finite dimension of hilbert spaces h1 h2 etc hk all finite dimensional hilbert space and then you consider the unitary group of this unitary group of this now you consider within this you consider the ith one and the jth one the ith hilbert space and jth hilbert space so consider the unitary operator u i j as a sub group of this but the unitary operators here they affect only uh, only this part h i tensor n j on the remaining ones they are like identity they are ampliations of unitary operators only so in the in the in the language of wires for example if i take uh, a unitary operator u12 u12 is a unitary operator in h1 tensor h2 and then remaining identity of h3 etc hk how oh, that is a simple case and in the more general case you if, if it is an ij you make a permutation the permutation is a unitary operator here bring it to this position apply and then go back by the permutation then you will get h i tensor uh, unitary in h i tensor h so this means you are making it is a two point interaction the unitary operator is uh, affecting only the i and j copies then the theorem is the universality theorem is every unitary operator belonging to u can be written as some u1 u2 etc some u n where each u r is uh, living only in two product of two hilbert space and uh, i have given a proof of this uh, in the you know proceedings of the indian academy of science uh, i don't remember the exact year i only remember it was uh, written for the retirement of ashok roy right so in that issue but i have used the language of quantum circuits whether one can do it without using uh, circuits at all purely as a theorem in unitary groups i would like to know right but the the efficiency of the quantum circuit language in studying unitary groups in large tensor products he uh, is very clear if you look at the, look at the methods that have evolved from computer science was it about the length yes same question ah about the length uh, that, that is of course here it is uh, um, here it is exponential growth with the with the k uh, but if you, because you are considering an arbitrary unitary operator but if it is a very special unitary operator then uh, you can use the special properties of that and reduce the growth and that is precisely the problem of uh, polynomial time algorithms 
minimum number of, for example, you want to perform addition, multiplication, division, arithmetical operation, how to use a minimum number of unitaries to arrive at the result or finding eigenvalues of a matrix. In these things, how to use minimum number and uh, Shor's achievement is that there exists a polynomial time algorithm for uh, factorization of an integer into primes. Right. So I have gone digressed a little more than expected. So now I come back to our about the unitary orthogonal basis I want to explain an example and from this this example gives rise to a problem but I think the solution of the problem lies in algebraic geometry which I do not know. So, but here in this institute some one of you because there are good algebraic geometers here, so with their help you may be able to solve uh, in a nice way. So uh, let me explain my special construction. So what is the problem? The problem is I, I consider say again H1 tensor H2 problem Construct subspaces. Yes, contained in H one tensor H two. In which every unit vector of yes, every every psi in yes. has Schmidt number greater than or equal to k. That is the problem. <coughs> so I will explain a construction for the case k equal to 2 example. And this example gives a more general, general problem. I would like to describe this problem. So let me take, uh, <coughs> generally I write M, M, N for uh, M cross N matrices. Now, if this has got dimension m and this has got dimension n, there is a natural identification of h1 tensor h2 with m, m, m. This is a Hilbert space with the scalar product x, y being trace x and y. Now, if, if I have a product vector u v, u here and v here, such vectors are total, they span h1 tensor h2 and if in h2 you fix a conjugation, a conjugation then you identify it with u and then because this is now made into a bra vector, so to remove the anti-linearity of that, you identify this. So you define this correspondence j 
and uh, you can check easily that gamma j is scalar product preserving. Scalar product These are rank 1 operators here, so they span here and these are uh, these vectors are total here. So, this correspondence is scalar product preserving. So, gamma j extends to a unitary isomorphism uh, between <coughs> the two. And if you do this, an elementary exercise the Schmidt number, the Schmidt number, we, we use the singular value decomposition. So, from that it will be clear the Schmidt number of uh, C, C being in H1, H2 is also equal to the rank of the matrix gamma j apply to C. So, oh, that is an exercise in ident in notation, exercise in notation and linear algebra, right. So, if you want to construct subspaces of, of states with Schmidt of subspaces where every state has got Schmidt number greater than or equal to k, you have the matrix theoretic problem. So, the general problem reduces to the following, namely in MM In the space of M by N matrices, in this construct construct subspaces spaces where every non zero element, every non zero element. as rank greater than or equal to k. That is the problem. Construct subspaces where every element has got rank greater than or equal to k. So, I will give one explicit construction and with that I will state a, state a problem. Yes, you naturally you would like as large as possible. Right, as long what is the maximum possible dimension. So that is why it comes down to some algebraic geometry. What is the maximal dimensional subspace with this kind of property? So you are you are asked the right question. So what is maximum <coughs> dimension? Yes. Yes, yes, subspace. Okay. Every non zero element element in S has rank greater than critic. So, but first let me give uh, 
a very elementary construction for the case k equal to <coughs> then with the help of the gamma j you can come here and uh, you will have Schmidt number greater than or equal to k for every vector there and so states with general states with support on such, uh, such subspaces they will be highly entangled and the general philosophy of quantum information theory is that entangled states, highly entangled states are uh, communication resources. Right? So, it, it does give rise to this important problem. So, I do the following. I choose uh, this unitary error basis. Uh, let, 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 me, let me come to the special case, young to young. It is a very special case. Young to young means uh, young to young to young. So, whenever I write young that means young, young, the square matrix. The space of matrices that itself is a Hilbert space. So, in M n, in the Hilbert space M n, Consider the following self adjoint operator phi whose spectral resolution looks like this P alpha. Now W alpha is a cat vector and W alpha is a bra vector here. So these are these are mutually orthogonal because W alpha in our notation is a unitary orthogonal basis, unitary orthogonal basis alpha equal to 1 to n square uh, 1 to n square because I am using a man p alpha greater than 0 p alpha is distinct so that the eigenvalues do not have multiplicity. <coughs> All the eigenvalues are of multiplicity 1 and these are the eigen, eigen projections of dimension 1. Then my subspace, this is an interesting subspace, consists of all matrices of the form A, A, B, C, D, B. This belongs to M two M. This is block matrix M two M. A B arbitrary. A B belonging to M N arbitrary. <coughs> suppose this is non zero, suppose uh, B is suppose B equal to zero, but A not equal to zero. So you have A A and zero zero here. So, its rank is greater than or equal to 2 or A equal to 0, but B not equal to 0, but note that phi is a positive self adjoint non singular operator, non singular. So, if B not equal to 0, phi B not equal to 0, these two are 0. So, again rank is greater than or equal to 2. So, in these two cases, 
the rank is greater than or equal to 2. Suppose A not equal to 0, B not equal to 0, that is the remaining case. Now, my claim is every element in S has rank greater than or equal to 2. Rank x greater than or equal to 2 if 0 not equal to x belongs to S. Suppose I denote this by x. Suppose rank x equal to 1. Because a not equal to 0, b not equal to 0, x is not equal to 0. Suppose rank x equal to 1, we will arrive at a contradiction. If rank x equal to 1, then you can write this as uh, uh, uv, this is a one column vector multiplied by uh, one row vector u prime v prime. So, rank 1 uh, matrices can be written as a column multiplied by a row, each of length m, because now I am working in m 2 m. In other words, this matrix is of this form, which is u u prime u v prime <coughs> v u prime and then v v prime. <coughs> but because this is a a you have the following relations. this equal to this because this is b and that is phi of b. So, phi applied to v u prime is equal to u v prime. This equality implies that V is a scalar multiple of U and V prime is a scalar multiple of U prime. C C prime not equal to 0. So, U prime which is uh, v prime equal to c u prime. Uh, uh, u u equal to some c inverse v. This is c inverse v. But V prime is C prime <coughs> U prime. I mean, V applied to this is a scalar multiple of the same vector. 
In other words, this is an eigenvector for phi. That means phi has a matrix, a rank 1 matrix as an eigenvector. Phi has a rank 1 matrix as an eigenvector. But all the eigenvectors of phi, they are from the uh, unitary error basis, W alpha. So there is a contradiction. So this is impossible. So every element uh, which is uh, non-zero here has rank greater than or equal to 2. But something remarkable happens now. Okay. So that is an operator on the matrix, right? Huh? That, uh, this is a this is a this is a rank one matrix. That is an operator on a matrix. No, no, no. But this, the the operators form a Hilbert space, and phi is an operator on that Hilbert space, and these operators are now look at what physicists usually call as super operators, right? Operators form a Hilbert space on which phi is an operator. No, why did you say that, that that matrix is a rank 1? Because of this nature, there is a ket bra, uh, this is a ket bra. A ket bra is of rank 1 or 0. It is a rank 1 when you consider as an operator on the matrix, right? As a matrix, is it? Oh, okay. No, this is an element of this MN. This is an element of MN. And MN is a Hilbert space. This is an element of human and that is a Hilbert space. That is matrices themselves form a Hilbert space. And capital phi is a is a self-adjoint operator on that Hilbert space. I think we put some Okay. Now in the Hilbert space, you look at the orthogonal complement of S. Right? In, in the Hilbert space M2N, you look at the orthogonal complement of S. So, an element here will be of the form, say, some K, L, M, N. And this is orthogonal to every element of this form. So, we have trace of the adjoint of this trace k dagger m dagger l dagger uh, l dagger multiplied by a a b p b this is equal to 0 because this is an element of uh, the adjoint which means a trace of k dagger a k dagger a plus m dagger b plus l dagger phi b plus l dagger a equal to 0 for all a b. So, if you put b equal to 0, k dagger plus n dagger trace a equal to 0 for every a, which means k plus n equal to 0. And if you do this, phi is self-adjoint and trace of this is scalar product. So, that phi can be brought phi can be brought here, so I can write it as phi L. So I have trace M plus phi L dagger multiplied by B, that is 0 for every B. So M plus phi L is 0. So 
uh, any element in the adjoint is of the form k n is simply minus k n is minus k and uh, this is uh, m uh, l and m is minus phi l. So you see it is more or less of the same form only some signature uh, is different and the order is different. So the same argument implies every element in the <coughs> also has Schmidt rank greater than or equal to 2. So here comes uh, an interesting property namely the space of 2n by 2n matrices m2n is a direct sum of s plus s perpendicular where rank x greater than or equal to 2 for every 0 not equal to x either in s or in S perpendicular. This is the property you get. So that is an interesting algebraic and geometric configuration. So there comes the question, there arises the natural question. Sorry. <laughs> rank x greater than or equal to 2 for every x in S union S perpendicular. So so I have the following problem. M N N decompose it as S plus S perpendicular where rank X greater than or equal to R for every X in S and rank Y greater than or equal to S for every 0 not equal to Y belonging to S perpendicular, what are the quadruples Mn or S for which this is possible? Quadruples for which this is possible. <coughs> That is the problem which arises in a natural way. So thrown into the gamma j inverse, you are interested in decomposing the states into two parts, in each of which you have a certain uh, amount of entanglement measured by the Schmidt number. Right. Now, I am hesitating to continue. <laughs> so, my, I, I, I have uh, to the question raised by Sundar Jr. I want to come back to that about the maximum dimension
of subspaces where the minimum uh, where the rank is greater than or equal to a given k. So, first thing is to examine this variety of matrices of rank less than or equal to k in The dimension of this first thing is to evaluate the dimension of this. I won't go into the details. I have a uh, I have a rough argument, probably somebody can work out the details in the in the tutorial rather than my doing it on the blackboard right so the dimension of this variety that means for this is equal to k into m plus n minus k but it may be better to have some tutors from algebraic geometry and work out uh, these details. Right. Now, uh, this is what uh, algebraic, uh, algebraic geometers call as, a, as an, a typical example of an algebraic variety because rank less than or equal to k means <coughs> all minors of order k plus 1 should vanish. So, it is simultaneous zeros of several polynomials, right. So, uh, they should be able to do it in their tutorial work. Now, let, us de let me denote this variety by s k. But now, uh, let us consider the subspace. Let L be a subspace uh, where L is a subspace of M M n. Every element not equal to 0 in L has rank, I have put here less than or equal to k. So, this is greater than or equal to k plus 1. this is a subspace. This is an example of what they call a projective variety. S k intersection L is 0. This is not a subspace, but nevertheless by the by a theorem in algebraic geometry again the dimension of S k plus the dimension of L is less than or equal to the dimension of the whole uh, space which is dimension of m m m m comma m which is m n. So, the dimension of L if you choose any such subspace the dimension of L dimension of L is less than or equal to M n minus M plus n into k plus k square from here, which is M minus k into M minus k. So, this is true. Now I am tired, tomorrow I will tell you in the 
beginning of the of our program tomorrow there so there exists an er not of this kind of this kind where the dimension of l not is actually equal to this m minus k into l minus k so we shall construct such a explicit give a, an explicit construction of such a subspace l not where every element has rank greater than or equal to k plus 1 but that uh, but about its orthogonal complement i cannot say anything because these constructions are quite complicated what happens in the orthogonal complement i won't be able to say anything but i will give you a reference uh, many parts of which i am not <coughs> able to follow because they use uh, many theorems from algebraic geometry but uh, you you uh, young people here should be able to make good progress and there are some mistakes also in this in this paper so it is a good paper to read it has good results it has good results and also mistakes so it is k or davidson davidson l w marco it must have appeared by now because uh, i took it from the archives and uh, i communicated to the last author whom i came to know the the mistakes but then he said he had a revised version where he had more general theorem so you have to only fo follow follow all this Column 0706 2449. So that is version one in that operator analysis. Right. 16 June. 2007 so there must be more improvements <coughs> but uh, there is a lot of non linear uh, analysis so algebraic geometry about tensors of matrices here so it is a independent reading but it has a lot of value for entanglement theory 